Uh, hello, good evening, and welcome to everybody who's, um, who's in the Zoom at the moment. We welcome you to the Year 7 2021 Virtual Opening Evening, taking place in Zoom tonight. Just um, some quick housekeeping tips. Um, the chat is there for any comments and um, questions that you would like to answer, or you'd like to actually ask, and we'll, we'll do our we'll best to- them. We'll answer them. <laughs> we'll uh, We'll have a look on the screen, we'll see them pop up, and we'll um, do our best to answer them. I'm Mitchell Hart. I'm the Year 12 St. Columba Anglican School Senior School Captain. Um, and we'd like to preface this, me and Em, with, with an interesting thought and memory from Year 7 um, ourselves. And my interesting thought from Year 7 was, uh, I remember sitting there in Year 7 and doing food tech and cooking all these beautiful and wonderful dishes that I myself could eat and that I could take home and share with my parents. Um, I'm Emily, the female school captain, and my Year 7... My best memory from Year 7 is probably the end of year presentation nights when all the years come together in choirs and we do, we sing in the choirs and the bands and um, there's lots of different performances and things like that and we all come together for the presentation night and that happens every year but um, that was my highlight of Year 7. So we will now introduce Mrs. Bilsma, our head of secondary. Thanks, Em. Thanks, Mitch. It's lovely to be here. It's quite an interesting experience uh, with the advent of COVID-19 to be presenting in this format. Exciting and a little bit nerve-wracking. So thank you to everybody that has joined us for this evening. On the information page, you will have seen videos from all of our directors. So please take the time to look at those. They have information about uh, specialty areas within the schools, sections of the school that each of you may be interested in, both the students and the parents. Uh, also on that page, we have a, a virtual tour of the school and you'll also see two Year 7 students. So they're current Year 7 students, one that has been with us for quite some time and the other one who's new to the school. And so they're able to tell you a little bit about their experience. So Year 6, you might be interested in listening to those and watching those. Uh, young students for us. Uh, this evening is being recorded and will be placed um, up perhaps on SCAD Express so we'll get that information to you. So if you want to, uh, would like to review this as a point of reference, please understand and know that it is being recorded. In terms of the agenda for this evening, um, you will hear more from Mitch and Emily. They will answer some questions that the Year 6 students have uh, submitted and anything that might come online. You'll also hear from Mrs Ella Lakin, who is the Year 7 patron, and so she will be the person that will be travelling through your high school journey uh, with you and alongside you, sometimes propping you up perhaps when you're struggling a little bit or maybe even telling you to do a few things a little bit better. So you'll hear from her. You'll also hear from Mr Paul McRickmanis, who will be speaking about dreaded tests, assessments, when in actual fact it's not that, not that dreaded. He'll be speaking to you about a lot of what goes on with the teaching and learning and I will also be answering some questions. I'll now pass you along to Mr Rick Menace, the, head, the Director of Teaching and Learning, so that he may speak to you. Great, thanks Mrs Bilsner. Um, look, good evening everyone. My name is uh, Paul Rick Menace. I am the Director of Teaching and Learning and I just wanted to talk about our curriculum and about our assessment, how we report to families. Uh, I guess I have one big take home message and that is that uh, Year 7 and in the years beyond as well, I'd really encourage you to embrace learning. I think school is about learning, that's what we're here for, we're here to learn and above everything else, embrace that concept of learning, learning over marks, learning over anything, just embrace learning. We're all uh, obviously highly aware of how um, rapidly changing our world is, I, the last few months have pointed that out to us strongly, but we've been talking for a few years about how uncertain the future is that our students might be entering. And uh, with that in mind, we've been talking about how can we create a curriculum that engages our students and prepares them well for what comes next. And, uh, and so we've been focusing on that. And with the changing world, we've looked at what is it that we've come from, that, that results-driven HSC that was my experience of school, and also looked at what else do our students need beyond school. And, um, we're trying to focus on both of those. We call it results plus, making sure our students attain the results we want them to out of their schooling, but also get the plus, a little bit extra in their schooling. 
Uh, that's being borne out by universities who are now like Australian National University. Not only do they look at students' results, but they actually ask students to um, validate their skills in key areas. Even at the start of this year, when we uh, kicked off our year, we had a conference here for parents called Ignite 2020, and we asked parents what were some of the attributes they would look for in a school graduate if they were employing one. And these are some of the comments. They said, someone who's willing to have a go, who's a problem solver, someone who's a good communicator, someone with teamwork, compassion, communication, who will think outside the box. And that's our goal for our students as they enter into year seven, to keep fostering those skills that they've developed in the early years of learning and to continue to build them. So it's not just the uh, results, but it's also the plus in their education. We talk about the six C's. We talk about critical thinking, communication, collaboration, creativity, citizenship, character. And that's our lofty goal for our teaching and learning practices, to incorporate them. And so our practice is geared towards that. And our practices in our curriculum and our assessment, we look to engage our students in meaningful tasks. And tasks that are beyond the stock stand assignment, tasks that maybe impact their world as well. And our goal for assessment in Year 7 is to actually focus on learning, not, not, not assessment for the sake of a summative task, but assessment for learning, to drive learning forward. Um, and so with that in mind, we, we aspire to give students a variety of activities to make sure assessment's ongoing, it's always accessible for students. And we're really we're trying to work in this balance between formal assessment tasks and informal tasks for our students. And what this looks like is that we have faculties who are, who are planning for their each subject and they look at the outcomes they want to assess and they're, they're planning what does success look like for students in these outcomes and making sure teachers are familiar with that so that in the day-to-day -day classroom, teachers can be looking at evidence of student learning. So a year seven student in a maths classroom studying a particular outcome, the teacher can actually look at their day-to-day -day learning and start to make judgments and collect evidence about student learning there. This evidence then provides great feedback to both the student and the teacher in terms of informing learning practices. Every class then is becoming an opportunity for the student to demonstrate what they are learning. Every class is an opportunity for the teacher to collect evidence on the student learning. Balance with that is, is a set of formal assessments in Year 7 as well. Tasks where we are aspiring for those deeper learning experiences. Tasks that we're in, aspiring to engage students in meaningful work. Um, you might hear some words when students come home talking about problem-based learning or project-based learning or inquiry-based learning. We might be, they might be talking about how they have to work with others, collaborate, how they have to present their work to another audience. And those, those tasks are designed to develop those key skills that I started talking about, those six Cs, that collaboration, that communication, in, a, in an area of citizenship so they can actually engage not just in the classroom but in the wider world and start to look at how they, as a person, can make a difference in their world. It may be that it's just in their immediate world, their family now, with an eye to producing great citizens for the future who will impact their own families and even beyond their families. Our assessment then for year, uh, for year seven, we're looking at assessing against outcomes. We're looking at has the student achieved the outcome? Have they achieved it at what we would say was grade level? Have, maybe they don't always get there straight away. Maybe they're still developing. And with, along with that, if a teacher is telling a student they're still developing towards an outcome, we'd be looking at providing advice on how they can move forward. Some students possibly are below grade level still. In that case, we'd be looking at what support can we give, offer them in the classroom to help bring them up to the grade level. But some students may well be able to apply their learning in unfamiliar situations. They may be quite sophisticated in what they're doing. They might be doing these tasks with flair and we would be assigning them grades of outstanding or high in that particular case. So assessment is against the outcomes it's looking at that grading from have they achieved the grade level? If they have, are they high or outstanding? Or if they're not yet there, are they developing? Or do they need some support? Are they below grade level? Our reporting, we report through our online platform sector. 
Sector Engage is the parent portal for that. And so to communicate to parents, we will provide progressive reports on students' progress throughout Year 7. That will give some real-time feedback to parents and to students and offering advice on what the next steps forward should be in their learning. Parents will get um, that grading advice back on formal tasks in, a, in an, uh, an appropriate and timely manner through, again, the Sector Engage platform. And of course, as usual, we'll offer our reports and our parent teacher nights on a semester basis. So all this process is about developing and embracing learning. And it's our way of providing feedback to the students. Our assessment is to provide feedback to the students so they can move forward and take the next steps in their learning. So that's a bit of a general overview of teaching and learning here at St. Columba. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to add them and we'll answer those. But right now I'm going to hand over to uh, Ms. Ella Lakin, who will be the year patron uh, for Year 7 and will guide these students in the coming years. Thank you. Yes, my name is Ella Lakin and I am very excited to be the Year 7 Year Patron for 2021. Uh, a little bit about myself and my role. I will be an advocate for you if I'm, if I'm talking to one of the students, your well-being and um, helping you to navigate through high school, which is a pretty exciting time in your life. Uh, helping you to understand how high school works, the type of um, landscapes that you'll be um, traversing, I guess, in terms of classwork, uh, friendship groups, and all the many opportunities that sort of point you in the direction of what you would like to do beyond school. So I will be, yeah, I will be a main point of contact for families when there's something that needs to be communicated to the school. And I'm very excited to have that opportunity. A little bit about me. Uh, I've been here at St. Columbus School now for nearly six years. I have been a year patron. Um, I'm the current year 12 year patron and I've had that opportunity. I've been in this position for three years prior to today. And so I have really been actively building uh, my knowledge and skill base with managing the well-being of young people in this school. Uh, I, a little bit about me. I, um, I'm from a bilingual family. I speak Spanish and English at home. And, um, and I'm a proud mother of two students who also go to this school. I will get into the question. So I, was, I had the opportunity last week to visit the current year six students in their classes and we had a little chat. And uh, during that time, I asked if they had any questions for me, for Ms. Bilsma or for the school captains. And if they did have questions, they could write those down they could put their name there or they didn't have to if they didn't want to. And we would do our best to answer those questions so that hopefully some of those concerns or worries or things you're excited about, we get to touch on those things tonight. There is also an opportunity at this time if you haven't had the opportunity to submit questions because maybe you're currently not here at the school or you're watching from somewhere else in the state or around the place that you can type in the question and answer and we will read them, read those questions and attempt to answer them as they, as they appear. Okay, so there were some frequently asked questions that I'm going to get into because they came up more than once. The biggest one was what can we talk to you about? Well, I tell you what, I think truthfully that a young person should be able to talk to an adult about anything at any time. And I have an open door policy with my office and I will always make time to talk to you about whatever it is that's bothering you. Sometimes the things that uh, affect your learning and your experience of high school are happening at school. And I'll do my best to manage that with my team, um, the professional team of uh, wellbeing teachers. But sometimes there's things outside of school that also impact the way you're learning and feeling. And, and I will do my best to try and talk you through your options and work with families to find the best possible outcome. So the truth is, if you've got a worry or concern, there is always an adult that you can come and talk to. What can we not talk to our year patron about? Or what's not a good thing to talk to you about? 
look, there's obviously sometimes conversations that are going to be really sensitive, but I can tell you in my experience, I have, I've had my fair share of interesting conversations and challenging conversations and sensitive ones. Um, and I'm fully prepared to walk that road with you. So what I guess I would say is there's nothing you can't talk to an adult about at any time. How much homework will there be? I'm gonna throw over later on to Mitch and Emily and I'll let them answer that for you because they have first-hand experience. Um, but I do think it is dependent on the teacher and whether there's assessment tasks or things coming up and projects that you're working on, whether you need to do them outside of school. Where can we go to talk to you? All year patrons have their own office. They may share with one other year patron. So it's quite private. So if there is something that you'd like to talk about, it's not a full staff room of teachers. It's usually a quieter staff room and it'll be around your playground area. So I'm very accessible. Um, you just need to knock on the door and I'm generally there. And then maybe just one other year patron who also deals with similar things uh, for their cohort. Uh, how many subjects do you have? I believe currently you have eight subjects uh, that are compulsory in year, in year seven, English, maths, PE, art, history, music, uh, technology and science. And so sometimes those things change depending on what's going on around the place. But gen at this year, that's currently what the courses that are being studied. You don't have electives yet, but you can pick, the, there is some ability to choose some things from year eight on. Where is year seven camp? The current booking is for Lake Keep It, which is out near Gunnada. Um, it's a wonderful sport and rec camp and it's, um, it's a very popular location and we have been going there for a number of years because of its popularity. Uh, what type of problems do you solve? Well, that's a golden question. Come at me, I'm, uh, I'm ready. Um, as, a, as a side note, I, uh, I do boxing for my personal well-being, so I'm ready to take on any problems that you might want to throw at me. Um, sometimes they're freshies that I might not have dealt with before, but look, I'm really fortunate to be part of a great staff that I, have, I can always uh, call for backup should I need it. Do I stay with you for all of high school? Yes, and that's why this is a really exciting role. When I get appointed, my tenure goes for the whole time that I am your, um, that you are at school. So I will be hopefully seeing all of you there at graduation. So that's really exciting. Um, and by then I will have a full swagger of awesome photos of all the trendy haircuts and stuff. And when you didn't get to choose all your own clothes right through from year seven to when you start to really you know, show your own characters in year 12. It's very exciting. Uh, what do you do if a student is embarrassed or shy to talk about something? I take a lot of pride in the fact that I spend a lot of time with my cohort during long breaks and around the playground and try to get to know you as a person. Um, it's called rapport building and I try really hard to make sure I'm visible and have those conversations so that should the need arise that you need to have one of those conversations that's a bit embarrassing or you feel a bit shy, that you feel comfortable enough in coming to me in those moments. How much time will you spend with each student specifically? Well, we are talking about six years together, guys, so quite a lot. Um, and look, it depends what's going on in your life and sometimes uh, years and classes and friendships are going to be easier to manage than, than others. So depending on what's happening with you, um, that will vary. But I do currently have a really special relationship with every single one of my Year 12 students and I'm very proud of that. And I will do what I can to make sure we share the same, if not stronger, because I'll have you guys for longer. But don't tell them because they're a little bit dirty about that. Um, Okay, uh, what type of sports do you get to do in year seven? All sorts of things and it changes from year to year. Um, some are on site, some are off site. And um, I'm sure if you watch some of those videos that those sorts of things are gonna be covered. Uh, do you have one teacher per subject? Yes, normally, but as you move through school, that teacher will change. So you might have one teacher for English in year seven, but in year eight, it'll be somebody else. 
um, and so on. So as the years progress, you will have a variety of different school teachers. Uh, cats or dogs? Okay, very important, I guess, for some. Thanks, Amelia, that was a good one. Uh, I've had a dog for a more and longer time in my life, so I'd probably have to go with my dog because he gives me the best reaction when I come home to school. But I have been a cat person, and I'm not afraid of being a cat person again, but currently I'd have to go with dogs. Um, where are we? When, in, when we are, oh, Matteo, when we are in classes, where are you? Well, it depends. Sometimes I'm at my desk, depending, and that will be in the year patron office. But if I'm not there, I'm doing that other thing that I do when I'm not year patroning, which happens to be teaching. So I'll be in class in front of my students. I'm a drama teacher and an entertainment teacher. So I'm generally found in this building where we are now, which is our performing arts centre in the drama room, or one of the rooms um, supporting those students that take those courses. What is my favourite part of being a year patron? Well, that's complex um, and, uh, and kind of emotional if I think about it too much, but I think the ability to know that I can be part of helping a young person find their journey and what they want to do beyond school and know that there is a beyond school and even though when things get really challenging, there is certainly beyond that and helping you find out what that is, is a really exciting part of my job. Uh, Katie Chambers, what should we be most excited about in Year 7? I think the ability that it's a clean slate, that your high school teachers don't know who you are and you have that ability to be whoever you want to be, seize new opportunities and, uh, and yeah, take, make new friendships because you'll have those there too. Uh, if we make a slightly bad mistake, Matt, this is a ripper. If we make a slightly bad mistake, will that be held against us or reflect on us when we get older in high school? It is a really good question. Slightly bad is where um, I think that's really important. Slightly bad mistakes, we can solve slightly bad mistakes. Um, and when you make a slightly bad mistake, hopefully, myself and the team that are supporting us can work to help you make slightly better um, choices in the future, I think would be my best advice there. How many people per subject or class? In year seven, you've got full classes. Um, so between, I'd say 25 to 30, depending on, on what that is. Art classes and specialty ones are a little bit less than that uh, when you need more resources. Um, Paige, do you help with friendship problems? Absolutely, that's my forte. I think um, I almost have a credential in helping with friendship problems. When times get hard, will you be there to help us? Absolutely, that's the exciting part of my job. And oh, I've got more questions. Sorry, I might just have to move closer so I can see them. Sorry. So this is a great school. Oh, <laughs> yeah, this is a very good school. Super, super good. <laughs> I was asked to say that this was a great school in Spanish. So, sí, super, super buenísimo este, este colegio. Me gusta mucho. <laughs> Thanks. I'll just have a little look. Sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, the expected size of the year seven intake. Oh, it's been passed along to me. <laughs> yes, 112. about 112, which, yeah, so about 25% of the cohort are new, are going to be new. So um, if you are watching and you're going to be new joining us, there are going to be a quarter of you are also new. So if you are someone that is already here on campus, my um, my biggest advice is to you guys, open your hearts and let these beautiful new um, students in because you, you never know, you never know the wonderful friendships that you are going to make. So yes, certainly you're not alone. Um, and there's one about technology up there. So uh, yes, we, uh, we do use technology a lot here at school and I believe the current, uh, the current policy is that every student will have their own laptop. 
Um, my experience is that a laptop in terms of device is best. I think that's what's recommended now, the policy is. Um, and it becomes, yeah, critical to your learning um, because I guess there's just so much flexibility and capacity. And I think particularly now, uh, having gone through the, the COVID-19 and remote learning experience as a drama teacher, no less, and let me tell you, that was challenging. But, um, but laptops and technology have absolutely been integrated into our teaching and learning practices at the school. I might jump, jump in and do one of those for, questions. Um, uh, I've got a question here. Can you tell, tell us how students from other schools will be integrated into the existing cohort? So it's dependent, obviously, on COVID. The, the um, plan is that we will have uh, taster days or information days, and uh, an orientation day for those new students. And so that will take place later in the year. We'll also have a transition program where those year six are also uh, coming up to see what the secondary school is like and experience of that. And so there'll be a chance for those new students to meet the already existing Year 6 cohort. So that will happen this year. Uh, if you wanted your child to have some extra time, that can certainly be arranged and we can look at, uh, look at what your personal circumstances are. The first day for the Year 7 cohort, so their very first day, rather than going to classes, they actually spend the day together, getting to know each other, having some peer support activities, meeting some of the senior year 11 and year 12 students, and making sure that that first day is about who, who are my friends, who are the new people at the school, how do I get to know everybody, and looking at also around the school and what the school looks like. So hopefully that answers that question. There was a question about the anti-bullying policy. Like every school, bullying is not acceptable at St Columba. So the policy is that the year patron will be the first person to deal with that. Uh, a student may report bullying to any teacher or any of the senior leaders, and then we will deal with that. The year patron, so Ella would be the first person, Miss Lakin would be the first person to deal with that, and she'll look at the, the story um, and the incident, and then from there we look at what the appropriate response is. And there's always a, a degree of involvement from myself as well, whether that's just be to look and the director of wellbeing, whether that's just a, an information or whether that we need to that be following that up further. Does PBL? Did he did he cover that? We might. This is for you, Mr. There's a question for Mr. What's the question, sorry? Uh, does PBL does PBL cross subject areas? All oh, right, that's a, that would be one of our aspirational goals to actually have PBL cross subject areas. We think that that would make a an opportunity for real life tasks that have a real impact in um, in society, in, inside the school and outside the school. Um, we our PBL is not fully there yet, but it's something that we're aspiring towards. There's a question about uh, any other languages other than English. So French is the language that's taught here at St. Columba. And so the year seven students will learn some French, continuing on with what they've done in their um, primary school years. Uh, if you're a new student coming into the school though, you certainly won't be disadvantaged um, by, by not having any French in your background. So the teachers will certainly make sure that you're not left behind and you've got the same skill level as everybody else in your class. Uh, we might go to Mitch and Emily, I think. Mitch and Emily, did you want to... I think some of the, the students asked you some questions as well. Sure. Yes, they did. Uh, we'll just answer the one here. How long is the average class go for? It's an hour. That one question. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go from the sheet. So, one person said, asked me, and, um, what is one thing that you wish you could go back to your year six self and tell yourself? Would you like to start? Um, I'd say be, uh, be open to everyone in the year. There's so many new people that come in and you meet so many people in year seven. That's what was so exciting about it, I think. So, um, yeah, just talking to as many people as you can. You know, even though you might have friends from the primary school that you're at now, there's going to be so many different people that you've never talked to before come in. So really make the most of that. Mm, I would say um, 
don't be afraid to uh, put yourself out there. There's so many opportunities that St. Columbia will offer you that, and that's in regards to sport, to performing arts, to academia as well. There's so many different things that you can involve yourself in. Um, and so don't be afraid to put yourself out there and go and go to the things that you enjoy doing. That might be debating, that might be dancing. Um, don't be scared to go to those groups to involve yourself and to put yourself out there and ensure that um, your time at SCAS is, is fun um, and rewarding. The next question we, has, we have is, um, was it easy to let go of primary school? I was so excited for U7, I I'm think it was for me. <laughs> I was so ready for U7. But um, if you do have any struggles, like I guess everyone in the years, you know, they're all going to be going through that that crazy transition. And Miss Lakin, she's the best year patron. So <laughs> you guys are so lucky there. She'll make you feel so welcome. And um, she'll, um, she'll be able to support you through anything. Uh, Tim asks, what are some of the major differences between primary and high school? So there are quite a few differences, but also similarities between primary and high school. So I know in high school, it's a lot more structured. So you have five different subjects per day, five one hour classes. And those one hour classes are, as I said, a different subject and you'll have a different teacher for those five subjects. Um, the break times are the same, but I think you get 10 minutes less break in high school and don't be scared off by that and don't be, oh, I hate high school because we don't get 10 <laughs> less minutes of playing handball. It's not like that. Um, it's not like that at all. It's take it as 10 more minutes of an opportunity to learn about your favorite subjects. Um, and so, as I said, there's some differences, but there's also some similarities that you have to keep in mind and that will make that process um, from change, that, that changing process a bit easier. Yeah, I think also that you, um, in primary school, you're a little bit restricted to just your class. In year seven, your, um, your food tech class might be different to say your science class. So you're mixing with people a lot more and um, yeah, you, you have so many different teachers. So if you know you don't like one teacher in one class, then it's fine because you, you might only have them once a week. So it's good that you have lots of different teachers and make lots of different connections there. Uh, another question is, what would you rate the choir? I think you and I would be in agreement on this one. Yeah, 10 out of 10. Mm. <laughs> Mitch and I both are, um, well, Mitch is in three choirs. I'm in two. We both went to New York two New York. years ago. Yeah. Was that two years ago? I, look. And we, we uh, you know, COVID-19 says that we can't do choir and that's kind of disappointing. Like, yeah. we're really missing that. But yeah, definitely join the choir, join the bands, e mm. extracurricular stuff. Like, don't be afraid, get in there. It's so much fun. Mm. We're, yeah. we're starting in year seven and we're still doing it now. The chances are that whatever you're interested in, there's going to be a group at SCAS that will foster that interest and that will allow you to go and enjoy that as much as you can. Yeah. So make sure that you ask Miss Lakin and ask other people in the high school about what those things are Keep an ear out for them and make sure you go there and enjoy them. Um, this one's for you, Em, if you wanted to read that one. Uh, what was the most challenging part about high school? Oh, um, high school's been going for a while. <laughs> <laughs> the most challenging part about high school probably be, um, I, get, I guess like that's in year seven, the most challenging part was probably um, getting used to that the difference in homework things that you're getting homework um it like every day instead of at the start of the week you're getting homework so you know that'll be different homework is different but the teachers will like they know exactly what's what it's like for you guys because they've had years come through before so um don't be scared with that homework and assessments like they're they're ready to support you with that um do you have do you have anything to say about struggles in high school? I think even if you do have struggles, there's always going to be someone there to talk to about those struggles and to help you solve them. So don't be worried. It's a very natural part of the experience going from primary school to high school to be scared and to be nervous about a few things. And if you are struggling, don't be afraid to reach out because there's always someone there to help you. Um, maybe we should answer some questions. Yeah. So the first one is Mitch and M, have you gone through high school? through the school, St. Columba, from kindergarten or primary school. Um, I personally have, I came to SCAS halfway through year five. So I was um, at SCAS when I made the transition from primary school to high school. Um, yeah, so I've been there since then. I came in year six. So I was still a little bit new in the year seven thing, but mm. I had a little bit of experience. Uh, someone else asks, are there leadership roles in year seven? <laughs> yes. 
Yeah. You can go for year F and year seven. Mitch and I were actually both year F and year seven, <laughs> which is a bit, you know, like yeah. full cycle thing. But <laughs> um, is there, are there any same, or oh, does it change it into class? Um, so it does, your class is not the same for everyone, but you will have. Will yeah, that. yeah, maybe we'll send. We'll leave that one for Yeah, okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, what do most kids do at lunchtime? Oh. It, that really varies. In year seven, <laughs> we were very handball obsessed. Yeah, handball is good. good. Handball obsessed. Um, what else? But who's to say that if you maybe you don't like handball, you can go to the library <laughs> and you can play some chess. You can yeah. read some books. You can hang out in more quiet space if you'd like. Um, but I guess what you do at lunchtime depends on just go with your friends, go with the flow. And if there's something that you want to involve yourself in, then don't be afraid to do so because lunchtime is the time to to calm down from the stresses of school and. It's very important, especially um, after this, after quarantine, you, you want to get back in there and socialize. So yeah. Do we have lockers? Yes. Yes, we do. Yes. Um, so you can use lockers for things like you often put your school box in there and you go there um, before school during long break and during short break to gather your books for the next couple of classes. And then you take them and you store your books and you have a lock to keep everything safe and secure. Is chapel seriously as awesome as we've heard? <laughs> chapel is chapel's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I love chapel. We have chapel half an hour a week. Um, it changes the day for what year you're in. But no, it's a great time just to reflect and like it looks at the school values and what it's, um, yeah, like what, what um, the Christian values. Mm. And it gives you time to reflect on that yeah. sort of stuff. Um, Mr. Hodge is a great chapel. Yeah. Aha, here's the golden question. Why do you think <laughs> Miss Lakin is a great year patron? <laughs> well, I feel like the question is, why wouldn't you? Because Miss Lakin is everything that you would want in a year patron that is going to bring you through from year seven. Um, me personally, I feel like she's great because you can go to her. You don't be afraid to go to her to talk about anything that's on your mind, whether that be something at school, something to do with your friends, something to do outside of school. She, she's that person that you can go to and feel comfortable talking to. Um, yeah, she's always there for you no matter what happens. She'll always have her... her um, her office desk, her office door rather, <laughs> open for you to, to walk through. Yeah, she's, she's a great um, friend as well. Like she will always, um, she, she'll give a lot. And so um, that's, I think going, like graduating, it's sad that we're yeah. all going, we're all going together, but Miss Lakin's staying here. Like she's part of our year. So <laughs> that's a bit sad, but you guys are very lucky. So really be appreciative. She's so um, great energy, great energy, great vibe. <laughs> um, Should we go back to here? Because there's a okay. few about this one. Meadow asks, is there more homework and is it more difficult? Um, yeah, I guess, look, in high school, homework is maybe a big scary thing, but it's not as bad as um, Miss Lakin and Mr. Rickmanis um, spoke about before. It, also, it often depends on the teacher, whether you have an assessment coming up, uh, those kinds of things. So you have more subjects, and therefore, I guess you will have a bit more homework. But to be honest, embrace the homework and think of it as an opportunity to fully experience Year 7 for what it is, because that's a part of the experience. You're growing up. And you're getting more schoolwork to do, but it's fun. A lot of it, a yeah, lot of it's fun. Yeah, it is. even though it's probably hard to sit there at home and say that homework is fun. <laughs> you may once you fall in love with the subjects, like Emma and I did. Yeah. Um, I think you won't find homework um, as much of a burden as you might now. Yeah, and um, just like some advice for people coming into Year Seven, like do take homework seriously because it is there. It's like not just a side thing. It's like oh, here's some extra stuff. Like that's part of the teachers. Um, mm like that's part of their plan and part of their learning. So if you really want to like get involved in stuff, do like do your homework. <laughs> Sounds lame, but it's, yeah, it's there for a reason. Chloe asks, do we, do you get more opportunities in high school? Oh, yeah. um, mm. oh it, what do you mean? What does that mean? Like, I'd say opportunities to, I guess, to do, I'm assuming co-curricular groups and stuff and oh, right. that kind of thing. There's a, there's a lot of similar stuff from primary school than there is to high school, but there's also different ones. Um, there's a lot, I would say there's more, yeah. Yeah, there yeah. is. And like more opportunities to get to know the teachers and stuff as well. Yeah. And like integrate with other year groups and you know, cause you're all together in the, and like through locker areas. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a part of the fun is getting to know your year group a lot and going through with them. And you'll often find 
that there's a lot of people in your year, especially when there's 112 of you, that there'll be some people who have shared interests with you and you can go and embrace those new opportunities with those people and that, that'll make it a lot more fun. Yeah. Should we oh, go to the screen? Yeah. The screen. Are there the same group of oh, students? That oh, that we've, oh, yeah. yeah I'll come back Do we that. have one specific classroom? No, that you change for each subject. You might have a few in the same classroom. Oh, but if, like, say you have English, then you'll have mostly have English in that classroom. Mm. But you have a timetable. Yes. That, and it'll tell you where everything is and the numbers and stuff. Yeah. What type of sports do you have? A bit of everything, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you'll have, you'll tend to have some sports in which you can go off campus for and you may have to pay a small fee for those ones but they're a lot of fun um i remember i had some of my most fun experiences um going In off sports. campus yeah. yeah 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 um i did i did multi sports for mm. all of my sports it's good, things it? it's so yeah. good yeah sports is good i miss sport from because you do sport right from year seven to year 10 i think you get an hour and a half mm. a i look forward to that, that. yeah, yeah definitely. it's good fun do you take your you can go. Do you take your own devices and do you allow iPads and keyboards? Do you bring our own devices to school? Mm. I'm not sure about the iPad, so I'll leave that one to Miss Billsma. I believe we do. I, th I remember that there were some kids in my year. I mean, keyboards on an iPad will allow you to type more efficiently. It may help you with your schoolwork. So, um. The only thing I would say is that uh, when you get to some of the subjects, uh, design and technology, mm and you have to have special programs that iPads may not be able to um, upload. And so those special programs allow you to do a lot of the design and technology um, using all those CAD other software. So my suggestion is that if you are going to buy a device, then you should look at getting some kind of um, a laptop, whether it be Mac or PC. So, yeah. Is there a sewing and cooking subject in Year 7? As far as I can remember, yes, there's textiles. I don't know if that's in year seven, though. I think that's in year eight. Technology. So technology. Oh, this, yeah. Design and technology, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that, that you That'll have design do. and technology in year seven and eight, and that'll be a variety of different things. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I think it's like coding and a lot, yeah, lots yeah. of stuff. Um, are phones allowed or are they handed into the office each morning? They're not handed into the office, they're just kept in your back, but they're not allowed to come. Yeah, don't, don't bring them out during the school day. Message your parents before school starts, um, saying that you love them and all those kinds of beautiful <laughs> things. And then ensure that you put them away and um, they're not something to be played with during school. Because otherwise Mrs. Billsman will take them. Exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly, so. Uh, do you wear sports uniform to school on your allocated sports day or do you change at school? Uh, so if you have sport period one or Two, then you would wear your sports uniform. Oh, apart from Fridays. Wait, no, not Fridays. They have Mondays. Monday, okay. sorry, Mondays. Mondays. You have sport, um, so you wear sports uniform the whole day. But if you had a pre, uh, PDH prac, then you would wear it for the time that it's on. So like if it was in the morning, then you would wear it in <laughs> the morning and then get to change. Yeah, your, your, your PE teachers will explain that to you, mm. but not the whole day if you have a PE prac. Yeah, so if you have a sport day for the whole year, that'll be, it's Monday, yep. yep. And they get you get to wear your sport uniform all day for that day. But if you, as Em said, if you have a prac for PDHPE, which is a subject, then those are the days in which you'll have to change in and out from this uniform to your sport uniform. What sport teams are there? And do you train after school? Uh, well, question. yeah, at the moment there isn't any sporting teams, <laughs> but um, usually there's, a lot of sporting teams. We have uh, rugby, touch football, um, soccer, netball, um, oh, volleyball, uh, volleyball, basketball. There's a bunch Everything, of sports, yeah. yeah. Um, cross country training and on um, Fridays, and um, you can do triathlon. There's a like you can competitions and things. Um, the training of them will depend on um, on the on the sport. The coach will figure that out. Yeah. I feel like this is probably a suitable one to finish up on, possibly. Yeah. Um, Elise asks, are the high school rules different to the primary rules? Um, I think in high, high, a part of the fun of high school is being a bit more independent in what you do. So, yeah. so I guess with if you're being more independent then you have to be more respectful and responsible for the things that you do. Um, so I guess in high school, the teachers won't be 
with you every step of the way as much as they are in primary school. And that may be scary um, at first, but you get used to it and you have friends and Miss Lake in there to help you through that journey. So I guess the rules are different. Most definitely, I wouldn't say they're harder or more strict, but they are different and they're, in, they're unique, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. If, you, if you do have any other questions, you can just email Mitch and I. Yeah, of course. And we're, we're happy course. to answer them anytime. Do you want us to answer the ones on the screen? I'll, I'll have a go at some of them. I'll start. Okay. Um, I'll talk about the subjects that you actually study in Year 7. So in Year 7, you'll be studying English, Math, Science, History, PDHPE, Christian Studies and French. You'll also do music and visual art, but they're what we call semesterized. So half the cohort will do music for the first half of the year and while the other students do visual art, and then we swap halfway through the year. And so the second part of the year, you'll do the opposite. So it'll either be music or visual arts, whichever one you didn't do at the beginning. You'll also do technology. And so that technology will encompass um, coding, robotics, there's some um, um, hospitality, so food technology, there's also the traditional type of cooking, so we call it textiles now. So all of those skills are involved in the technology. So how do you know which class you're going to be placed in? Well, it's not like we put your name in a hat and then we just draw it out. So what we actually do is the team of um, we speak to the year six teachers from last year, we look at the reports for any incoming students, we speak to, we sit down as a team, so Miss Lakin, myself, uh, Mr McManus, uh, we look at, you know, what, wh where those students would be best placed, best placed in terms of how they will go into, in learning. And also and if there are any other friendship issues or any other concerns, because we want to make sure that that class you're with for the whole year is the best class for you. Do we swap you out of that class? No, we try and take as much time as we possibly can to get it right in the first place. Um, you are also placed in wellbeing groups and they're your house groups. So if you're an Innes, yay, go Innes, you stay in Innes the whole way through and you'll then obviously be with those uh, students that you've already had or those kids that you're already in that Innes house with or, or uh, Farrell or whatever your house must be. In terms of sports, sports for year seven and eight, uh, sorry, yeah, well, year seven and eight is on Mondays at the moment. And so you will be able to choose your sport. And so you'll have some mixing there as well. And you'll also be mixing in the playground. So it, even though you're in the same class, you're doing lots of other mixing. Um, cooking extracurricular on the weekend. Most, most extracurricular activities happen during the week at St Columba, but you certainly can still be involved in normal sporting clubs uh, in the community. So if you're already part of a sporting club and you'd like to continue with that and it happens on the weekend, then I'd certainly say to you, don't just give up what you're doing. Um, try and incorporate it into your life and make sure your parents are okay with that also um, because most of the training occurs during the week. I had some questions, some logistics questions. So Colt had sent one in about how long are the breaks. The breaks are the same as in the primary school, but if you're new to St. Columba next year, they have a system where we have a long break. So the long break happens at 10.50 and it runs for 40 minutes. And then we have a short break at um, 2.50, 2 o'clock, and that's about 20 minutes. I really struggled with this at first because I was so hungry and I didn't eat enough in my long break. Um, so that's the same structure. We have the same structure with five periods a day and a well-being time. So it's exactly the same as in the primary school and those, those periods are 50 minutes. Rachel's asked, where do we go for excursions? Everywhere. So I'm the person that signs up on all the excursions. And I think before COVID hit, I was signing up on excursions that went all over the place. I'm just completely overwhelmed by how many opportunities are around for excursions. There are excursions to Sydney, there are excursions to local areas, there are excursions to sort of Coffs Harbour. Um, so there's lots of excursions that have not only in Year 7, the whole way through to Year 12, and I've just learned that Mitch and Em went to New York. How lucky is that to go to New York in your high school? Um, Colt also asked, what was it like when you first came to SCAD? So those people that aren't aware, this is my first year. So 
I've been here. We moved to Port Macquarie just before December. So like you guys will be next year, my first day here was so daunting. I didn't know where any of the rooms were. I had to ask everybody where the rooms were, just like what you might have to do. And so don't be afraid about asking where rooms are because people will be so helpful to you. And before you know it, you'll know exactly where you're going. And if you don't, there'll be a diary with a map for you to help and refer to. Um, Finns ask, will you be pulled out of class for special occasions? This was one of my funniest memories of first starting at SCAS. They have a phone in the classroom. And in my second lesson here, the phone rang in the classroom, only I didn't know there was a phone in the classroom. And so the kids had to tell me, so sometimes if there's an emergency, the phone might ring and the teacher will subtly, not at all like I did my first lesson, work out what the message is for and they'll tell you. But most of the times, if there is a message that has to go out, it's done via email and we can just let you know, oh, look, mum's left your lunchbox or dad's coming to pick you up. Um, so we get a message across that way. But we try not to take you out of class because you're here to learn. And we also don't want to make sure that you're embarrassed in any way. Um, um, I think that's probably uh, most. If you get lost going to class, I think I've answered. Um, well, are there any up on the screen? Do we have what? robotics? So we do have robotics as an extracurricular and they also do coding in that technology. So robotics, you can start in year seven and M's dad is um, always involved in the robotics. And He's that's, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a really popular extracurricular activity that you can do. Where you also, if you win the competition, not only do you get to see Sydney and take on Sydney, you get to take on the world. I think they went overseas last year as well, yeah. didn't they? Houston. Yeah. Houston. Yeah. Houston. Houston. For the past year. Um, what are the house colours? Very important question. Well, I actually do know, uh, so Innes is green, Farrell is red. red, the yellow one is Robinson, Robinson. Yes. and McKay, blue. <laughs> <laughs> so they're very important colours and a very important question. Uh, do you have to wear a hat at break times? Yes. Um, so obviously it's a very sunny environment up here in Port Macquarie and you do. I'm very strict on uniform. Um, so you need to wear your uniform with pride and make sure that you're dressed appropriately at all times. Can we eat anywhere? Year 7 actually have their own area, so near Miss Lakin. So they can go to the Iona Sports to do some sport during long break or short break and they can go to the canteen. But all of Year 7 stay in their own area. And that area is an area where they can play handball, they can sit. They do sometimes go across to the Oval and play um, any of the, the footy games. Um, I've seen some girls, I saw some girls out skipping actually the other day. Um, yeah. yeah, so I think that's probably, um, I think that's probably, Here we go. Uh, can we practice music at lunchtime? Yes, we can. Yeah. There's little tuition yeah. rooms, yeah. Now, often and so if you study music. a music instrument, I would say to you, like Mitch said before, make sure you keep doing all of those things. And if you don't play a musical instrument, here's your chance to try. You get to reinvent yourself when you come to high school. So if you've always thought about learning a musical instrument, then why not take this opportunity? And so a tutor might come and give you lessons during um, class time or before school or, or, or during break. But we have lots of music um, tuition rooms where you can go and practice. And so they've got their pianos there and other instruments. So definitely. Do we finish school at the same time as primary? Slightly later. So it's a little bit different at the moment because of COVID, but secondary school finishes about five minutes later, but in, certainly in enough time to grab, uh, grab your bags and go to the buses. So you're not allowed to take your bags to class. Your bags stay in your locker. Uh, everything is in your locker. So the only thing you have to take to class is your laptop and any books. And you've got enough time to go get all of that before you go back to all go to the bus or get picked up. Are you allowed to wear earrings and makeup? No. Uh, one, no makeup, one pair of small earrings. <laughs> Emily's modelling. <laughs> <laughs> Are the incoming year seven kids nice? Will you yes. have any kids? Yeah. Always. So Nisha, if I've said that correctly, 
I, the biggest thing I found coming to this school was just how nice the students were. I was just as scared as you were starting the first day. Um, and I've met primary students because I have some, my own children are in the primary school as well as the high school. And everyone is lovely, really friendly. So from somebody that started new, I can honestly say to you, everyone has been so friendly. Year seven lockers, maybe you oh, can yeah. talk. Where are the year seven lockers? Uh, if you are familiar with the campus, they are down around where our amphitheater is um, and there's some construction going on there with um, one of our latest developments, which is a sustainability centre. Um, and Year 7 lockers sort of wrap around that building uh, and then there are a wonderful line of citrus trees, all in full bloom at the moment. So, and Year 7 lockers sort of wrap around that building, um, which is closest to our our back oval. Um, if you haven't been here on campus, um, I believe there is a bit of a virtual walkthrough tour. So if you see any citrus trees and in that footage or, or an outdoor amphitheatre, you may see that. Um, the lockers are around there. They're brightly coloured in house colours. Um, and so they're quite easy to spot. So when you're doing that virtual tour online, you can have a look for those brightly coloured lockers and that, that will be your sort of year seven locker area, which leads to be your year seven area. And my year patron office is happily nuzzled in into that little haven of, of our campus. <laughs> yes, to practice coding, yes. Yes, no. Yes. The down in the um, trade, to the trade training centre, um, the tech rooms, yeah. It's a specific place to, to be practicing coding mm -hmm. and where they build their robotics. So they have claimed a section of one of our technology areas and uh, within that, that's where all the, the correct uh, equipment is and tools that they need to do that. So some of these clubs happen at lunchtime. So as Mitch said, if you don't want to be active, you can certainly go to the clubs at lunchtime and it's actually cool to go to these places. So. Uh, certainly, um, a lot of them, there's art club that runs at lunchtime and a, or, or long break, and I know how popular that is. Um, so there's a range of, range of activities that take place at lunch. Um, I believe that brings us just about to the end mm. of our virtual evening. So I'll hand over to, is it Mitchell and Emily? Please. Emma? Sure. <laughs> Um, well, is there, is there Thank anyone? You. Um, what are all the badges, badges on Mitch's blazer? Give us a rundown. Oh, <laughs> look. They all relate to school in their own little, and this is, this is a perfect example of how many different things that you can involve yourself <laughs> in, and also with Emily. So, you know, you've got choir leader, you have, there's a manshead badge, there's a, another manshead badge, there's all different things. They're all representative of different clubs and stuff and co-curricular activities that you can involve yourself in. But they all relate to school. And as I said, it's an example of how many things that you can involve yourself in if you have interests in those certain things. But I won't get into um, how each one relates to me personally or the school. Because <laughs> <laughs> we'll be here until 8 p.m. and that's how we do it. <laughs> um, what are your favorite co-curriculars? Oh, oh. Uh, choir. Chamber mm -hmm. choir. Um, Dance. I do co-curricular dance. Um, I I did drama ensemble. That's so fun. Get into drama <laughs> ensemble. It's so good. Um, I did. I assistant directed Matilda. So you guys, not not next year, but the year after, you'll have a oh next year, next year you'll have school musical. Get into that. Um, and just sporting teams and netball. I don't know, they're, they're all good. Just mm. do what you want. It's so fun. I think debating, um, <laughs> I involved myself in debating and public speaking and I know I, I love English. So those kinds of things are what I love. But there are also opportunities to gain confidence. Um, maybe not just in gaining friends, but also in speaking in front of people. Because I know that doing speeches and stuff like that in class is, is quite an important part of um, your assessments as you go through high school. So if you want to um, gain more confidence in speaking in front of others, 
then go along to debating and public speaking and those kinds of activities. Yeah, and you also get to meet lots of people from other years as well. That mm. was so good with choir and um, and all those extracurricular things is you get to, like I've met in year seven, I was meeting year 12s and year 11s. And so get to meet across the whole school. Yeah. Well, thank you. We might uh, end the formal component of our evening. We're very appreciative of you for joining us. If you have any questions or any more or anything you'd like further information on, then please, SCAS Express, uh, sorry, SCAS Explain has uh, a large amount of information. Do not hesitate to email or ring the front office. Um, and then Mitch or Emily or Ella or myself can certainly answer. Uh, if you've got any questions about enrollment process, then please contact the enrollments office and they will certainly help you with that. I know that I've started interviewing Year 7 students for next year, so the process has already started. Um, and if you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to just contact. So thank you once again and enjoy your evening.